you know, as collaborative robots or cobots, like you had mentioned, are, are still a relatively new concept. Could you please explain to our audience what exactly they are? Sure. Okay. Well, I guess that it's um, they can be variously described as um, as the worker's best friend, but also as the boss's best friend. Um, essentially, workers love the uh, love the fact that the dull, dirty, and dangerous tasks can be done by a cobot, uh, while the bosses love the fact that uh, the the cobot keeps coming in day after day, doesn't take breaks, um, it doesn't take holidays, doesn't call in sick and can work overtime without any extra cost. So in the bottom line is a collaborative robot is very much the same as an industrial robot, except that it has safety built into it. So it's being designed to collaborate with the workers. In other words, uh, work next to the workers rather than being hidden away in cages and, and safety fences, which most people might be uh, familiar with with industrial robots. So it is the, the worker's mate and it is the boss's mate because it keeps on showing up every day. Yeah, okay. So you mentioned that it's it's both advantageous to the worker and the boss. For the worker, why is that the case? There's a lot of tasks that are, are performed within the manufacturing process, um, which a, a human is absolutely required because a human has two eyes and two hands and there's certain tasks that um, you need a, a certain dexterity and that's what a human can bring to the bring to the manufacturing process. On the other side of things, there's very uh, quite a number of repetitive tasks which don't necessarily need that dexterity. And those sort of dull, boring tasks can easily be handled by a collaborative robot. And that means that uh, um, instead of uh, people being finding these jobs that are perhaps low paying and, and very boring and, and not inspiring, uh, they can be placed into other positions within the operation that add more value to the business and let the cobot uh, do those boring tasks of picking and packing, palletizing, uh, maybe welding, uh, those sort of functions that it doesn't necessarily require a high level of, of skill, but it does require repetitive action and accurate action. And that's where the collaborative robot comes into it. And so it takes away those, those tasks from uh, menial tasks, if you like, from the workers themselves. Right, so in, in that, in that collaborative environment, is it safe to say that you know, these cobots are going to have to be human sized? Yeah, uh, not necessarily, but often it is the case that they're they're nominally, um, you know, we start off with a unit that it, it has a, a reach of 900 millimetres. So that's uh, perhaps a little bit more about the same as a human's reach. Um, doesn't have the dexterity of a human, of course, uh, although we, we're getting better and better at that with uh, all the time with different uh, end effectors, we call them uh, the hands, if you like, that go on the end of a robot. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's that's about the size. So it, uh, it doesn't take up a lot of space. And that's one of the great things from the boss's perspective. He doesn't have to take up a whole lot of real estate, precious real estate in his factory to install this level of automation. So, so on the notion of of not occupying a lot of real estate, and given that these robots operate collaboratively with human workers, what does that collaboration look like, or what can that co collaboration look like? Okay, um, you could picture a line where a human is required to do some level of um, intricate assembly that requires the manipulation of uh, an eye. Uh, coordination, hand-eye coordination to put a part together. But once that part has been put together or packaged in a particular way, um, it then needs to be placed into a box, for example, or that box then at the end of the line needs to be placed onto a pallet. That doesn't necessarily need the same level of hand-eye coordination, um, and it's just a very repetitive task. And that's where the robot, or the sorry, the cobot can be placed directly next to a worker um, and safely operate, in most cases, uh, right next to that, that human operator and get those, uh, those processes done, such as putting a, a part into a box, uh, taking that box and putting it onto a pallet. Um, those are the sort of processes, those highly, highly repetitive processes that 
humans don't really like to do those sort of processes, but the cobot is happy to do it day in, day out.